Thanks. Um, so I will briefly give you an introduction what the generally vaccine are important and connected with the immunosystem and uh, move shortly on the presentation indeed why mRNA cancer vaccine was uh, really important for the development of COVID mRNA vaccines. Um, of course, the history of pandemic challenged uh, human beings and uh, in several uh, times and, and uh, constantly we are uh, challenging, but of course, uh, um, humans always develop skills to, and example are the vaccine indeed that immediately started really long ago for uh, protect and the human being from these uh, challenging pathogens. Uh, I will not enter in the detail definitely on the every vaccine and which is the importance of them, but these cartoons also display uh, nicely um, the different, uh, the different uh, pathologies that we were challenged in the, in the age time. And then immediately uh, the appearance of vaccine, how the contraction of the, the disease were. Uh, effort and then um, control that was really impressive and very important. Um, in the vaccine, the adjuvant effect was the major or more debatable con uh, component, but of course a vaccine is composed uh, by several entities that then need to give an immuno, immuno, um, immunological power, immunological activity, uh, an antigen-specific uh, um, clonal expansion of B cells and T cells, it will be uh, one of the additional aspects of the vaccine that was not only the production of antibody, uh, high specific antibody that it can be neutralizing and blocking, but also the generation of cyto cytotoxic T cells is one of the most important aspects of vaccines. And, uh, and the last lost lasting adaptive immunoresponse is one of the characteristics that allow us to, protect, to be protected for a very long time. So there are several adjuvants that they component that uh, uh, allow the, the, uh, the protein or the virus to be immunogenic and to be uh, inflammatory, mildly inflammatory. But I don't want to describe this, but just to give you a concept that was a lot invested. To, to generate an adjuvant and to be a simulator of the immune system. And mRNA vaccine has their own activity and we will show that later. To go deeply on the immune system, of course, we know that we are, um, our immune system is composed by several important and beautiful cells that tackle the body are very motile cells that uh, occupy the, via the bloodstream, but then also the tissue everywhere, every tissue of our um, body. And those cells are just the majority that we can describe here and see here, but among every subset, we have at least uh, five up to seven, uh, two up to seven subsets of cells. So the, 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 the tree became very, very complex. Um, however, as I said, the most important aspect of the immune system that patrol, patrol the, the, the body and can migrate via bloodstream, but also uh, via the lymph, uh, lymphatic uh, system. And that one of the most important aspects is indeed the connection of the skin, where generally a bite or the pathogen can uh, come, or the lung, where the pathogen feed, and then immediately uh, T cells, um, I mean, uh, the immune system sends the pathogen. Um, the lymphatic system, I want to uh, really emphasize the importance because especially for the drainage of the skin and for the vaccine concept is also one of the components very, very important to distribute the vaccine properly, uh, mainly on the lymph nodes where the immunological active uh, function of the vaccine needs to, to have a uh, role. And uh, all the immunos, the immunos the immunogenicity of vaccine and then the immunology based on the vaccination allowed also recently uh, to drive this most important cartoon for the cancer immunotherapy, where they call immunocancer cycle. But uh, this, cancer, this cycle, the immunocycle, was very well known by immunologists much before that oncoimmunology gave uh, a lot of uh, effort and benefit for cancer patients. So indeed, from peripheral tissue to the lymph node and back again from lymph node to the peripheral tissue. So this 
connection is really important via the lymph and via the blood to allow that immunoresponse. And this is one, one of a very beautiful cartoon that recently has been published by the group on the GSK in Vienna, where they describe very, very detailed the mechanism of function of the intramuscular injected vaccine. And, uh, and of course, I don't enter in the detail to describe you all the steps that they devise, and most of them are in, not all of them, but most of them are in, and uh, still a lot of things need to be understood mechanistically, but um, the most important is indeed here, I depicted the lymph panel, the, the lymph panel area, where the dendritic cells mainly can drive the, and uh, shuffle the vaccine from the periphery into the lymph panel to generate an immunoresponse. The myeloid uh, migrate for the dendritic cells and they can activate the CD40 cells, and the CD40 cells can interact also with the B cells and uh, also the migratory DC also can interact with the B cell directly. And this networking is really, really complex to face-by-face to -face mount a B cell in humoral immune response and a cytotoxic B cell immune response. Mechanistically, this is something that we study on, on, on immunology, but in biology also, is how important dendritic cells and antigen-presenting cells are able to uh, internalized uh, or viral antigen like endogenous antigen or exogenous antigen if it's by phagocytosis uh, engulfed by the, the antigen presenting cells and by several mechanisms the most important is to process and present a specific factor to the CD8 T cells in class 1 and in and for the CD4 T cells on class 2 molecules expressed on the cell membrane. And this mechanistical pathway is extremely well coordinated, and this is the base of our uh, immunological response, uh, at least for the T cells. But this axis also stimulates the formation, then, thanks to the formation of CD4 cells, the boost of the B cells and the humoral response. Uh, one aspect is in, in, indeed very important is also the timing of the immune response. The, the Critic cells need to take the vaccine from the periphery, bring to the lymph node and the prime T cells and B cells, but then this takes uh, time. And then the most important aspect is very often T cells induce also memory in the, on, the, on the boost and after priming. But this is always now what one of the most important aspects to learn still from the uh, COVID vaccine that we are um, discussing today. Um, I give a feedback and a small window that actually uh, introduced my journey that from my experience in postdoctoral fellow in, in Harvard Medical School, I joined in mind 2010, Hugo Sachin and Özlem Tureci when they found Tron in 2010. And uh, this is our, were our lab. And of course, then after 10 years, everybody knows these uh, two scientists. I don't need to introduce them. And uh, the fantastic journal, the journey that I was really happy to take place and participate was based on the mRNA cancer vaccine. So the journey started definitely to design the mRNA vaccine with a lot of biochemical and molecular biology and chemical uh, studies on the stabilization of mRNAs um, with uh, a lot of important uh, modification and structural, chemical structure for the mRNA to be very stable. And then um, these, uh, um, the, the first part of the, of the study launched in a lot of biological application and uh, all the characteristics of the mRNA generally that uh, how was designed are largely, sorry for the background, uh, was largely published already. I don't enter into the detail. However, here you can see that then uh, we can define the mRNA based therapeutics for cancer vaccine and other um, protein replacement therapies in two branches. That this is very important for you to know. Uh, I don't know if how experts are everybody on the mRNA, but of course this is a simplistic view. But then Andre uh, Kuhn, when was the founder of course on the BioNTech side for the immunogenic mRNA, brought the concept. And uh, lately, Katerina, Katerina Carico Kati brought from the UPenn University the technology of the non immunogenic RNA. So the two, for practical reasons, they are very, very 
inflammatory because they are normal mRNA expressing uridine. When the non-immunogenic mRNA, we will see later a cartoon, do not express uridine, but they have a chemical modification of the uridine, so they are not sent to the mainly to the TLR3 and the TLR7 receptor from immune cells, and therefore they are more silent. Uh, among the different modifications, the most important aspect is that the non-immunogenic mRNA that will be the most uh, the, the, the vaccine for um, COVID-19 um, um, platform um, is indeed uh, very long-lasting in terms of expression. So protein has very long expression time, and while the immunogenic mRNA show a very short um, uh, expression time, let's say, and uh, uh, for this reason, this is the cartoon that I specify simply so the mRNA that enter into the cells uh, simply could induce a, a lot of interferon alpha uh, type 1 interferon in immunocells in the uh, in the monocyte, while the non-immunogenic RNA, let's say the modified and the purified as a single strand fragment, are more silenced and they allow the, the prolonged expression of the antigen and the prolonged expression of protein encoded by the mRNA cells. So, of course, when we discuss about um, uh, vaccine, you always need to take in account formulations. And by Uncle was Henrich was developing one formulation for the cancer vaccine that allowed us to publish the first study for systemic delivery for cancer patients of the mRNA as an organic mRNA. Uh, in for cancer patients for immunotherapy. And briefly, I will not enter so much in the detail, but you will have uh, uh, mainly the spleen of um, the clinical study in mice, but also in human, of course, that the spleen uh, is the major organ targeted by this formulation, carry the mRNA. And then CD4 and CD18 cells uh, are primed for antigen specificity. Uh, I will show you briefly the story uh, of mRNA vaccine for the cancer uh, entity that is induced by HPV, uh, the human papilloma virus, that we could detect uh, based on the vaccination a lot of antigen-specific T cells in circulation on the blood device in a time-related um, manner. And the most important was the therapeutic vaccine in fact, the day 7 or day 10 or day 13 post-tumor circulation can induce a dramatic prevention or rejection or control of tumor. Uh, rejection very strong, but as soon as the vaccine is interrupted, you have relapse of the tumors. And this is something that um, was able to show a beneficial effect in survival on the mice, and more importantly, also to reduce memory on the T cells. And this is, was an experiment where we re-challenged the mice that were surviving the previous uh, vaccination and controlled the tumor they were able to control a second challenge of the tumor. So in, in, in suggesting that the memory immunoresponse is uh, induced. Uh, we have more data, of course, in the publication, but this is also the effect of the vaccine in combination with the anti-cancer, with the immunocheckpoint, anti pdl one that the vaccinal is induced, as uh, depicted here in red, uh, mRNA vaccine and anti pdl one increase the survival of the mice. So based on this, of course, the study was conducted long ago, already published in 2016, in the first melanoma patients that we were able to induce and show antigen-specific T cell response by Elispot, but also by tetramestane so of blood in the blood of patients that we can detect after five, six, and eight vaccination, the antigen-specific T cells from the patient, specific for the vaccine that was used in that situation. So this is just to give you a short overview of the journey that allowed the cancer vaccine to definitely uh, start a very promising and several clinical trial conducted by Biontech, of course. And then the journey was speed up by the light speed uh, uh, program that we called the Biontech code at that time. And uh, this I don't need to introduce is an, actually a not updated version, but just uh, to show in one of work we were pushed to, um, to speed up the production of the vaccine based on the knowledge that we have. And since the molecular biology are really uh, helpful and uh, helpful and very quick to design a 
only provide good than benefit as depicted in the cartoon, the development of the vaccine, the first vaccine in less than one year. Uh, but again, the knowledge was very really strong in, uh, in several uh, uh, clinical cancer studies. Oh, sorry. And uh, here I just uh, wanted to highlight that, of course, BioNTech was one of the uh, pioneers, uh, of course, supported a fighter for the virus, for the distribution and the production of the vaccine. But of course, uh, there are several um, um, protagonist in this journey that uh, we know everybody uh, behind the, the mRNA therapeutics that is of course modern in US, um, University of Pennsylvania, but Carico and uh, Jill Weisman and CureVac. So I would, I would say that there are several mechanisms that we can depict uh, the role of, uh, as depicted in the previous cartoon, involving the vaccination. But of course, the immune system is the one allowed us to control uh, by the antibody uh, production the um, virus and, uh, and block and neutralize the virus to potentially bind um, target cells. But of course, also this is the induction of T cells that are able to kill the, the viral infected cells based on the presentation of uh, peptide on the cell surface of infected cells. So this, the journey was definitely uh, with uh, completed with the first uh, uh, publication that was done in 2020 uh, for the two vaccines that BioNTech proposed, but then at the end of the one that released was the 16.2b2. And the difference, just, just to nicely show briefly, is that one was uh, composed by the soluble uh, component of the vaccine, the S1 spike protein, a portion of it, while uh, the full, the, the, the vaccine that we are having now encoded a membrane anchor, full length of spike protein, stabilized in uh, perfusion confirmation, but as uh, nicely Mauro highlighted with the uh, previous, uh, uh, with mutation to allow to connect um, infusion um, characteristics. So these are the data uh, that you can find in the journal, I go very quickly, but what is important is to show that, that after the second vaccination, the AGG titer in the patient, in the young patient, but also in the age patient for the two vaccine in blue is that the one that we are get uh, used for, um, uh, are really, really uh, good and very um, sustained. And, um, and they also have a very good capacity of neutralizing uh, the virus in the neutralization assay. And this is the one of the most emerging uh, graph and picture that we uh, learned from the paper and uh, is about the protection connecting by the patient treated with the vaccine versus the placebo, how is the incident of uh, disease. But what is a little bit um, uh, frustrating is that, of course, that the analysis was done after the, 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 do the second dose uh, up to 100 days, and we don't have yet very good data, I believe, uh, to share. I don't have the data yet to share for the long-lasting memory, because, of course, people um, uh, that are vaccinated almost one year ago mount a very good immune response, and then what we will like to know more. So in this cartoon, I want to just show you briefly the design of the, the two vaccine, but of course the purple is the one that drives you the, the different the, our attention because it's the one that we are getting used and Moderna has very similar um, settings. Um, and again, the mouse study, uh, I don't go in the detail, but again, uh, as I showed you before in the human, the mouse study was done in almost in parallel or concomitantly uh, <coughs> ago, but published much later, uh, of course, for uh, concentration of activity and function on the clinical trials via, by BioNTech. But the mouse study was also showing very good data on the IgG production and neutralization titer. And, uh, and uh, most importantly, on the T cell response, like a gamma production, IL-2 production uh, by the T cells, uh, in the early spot too, against the peptide specifically, and very little induction of TH2 type of uh, cytokines uh, like IL-4. Uh, again, macaque study that I will skip for time restriction that doesn't make so important. While then at the end was also published the data, and as I said, the data reside up to eight 
85 days after the initial vaccination on the uh, neutralization capacity of the IgG of the patients based on the different dose. Uh, as well as the type of IgG from S1 or IBD-specific IgG on the patient. These are things that are published and, of course, are the most important is not only the humoral response, as I depicted uh, previously, but is also the induction of T-cells uh, who are able to help B-cells, like CD4 cells, or have an effective function. And in addition, the cytotoxic T cells that are one that we always aim to have for the vaccine, the most difficult to obtain, but the, the most important effector cells for the vaccine to reject the viral infected T cells. And for that, I think and I hope I gave you a um, nice or clear overview of the journey of the mRNA based therapeutics that was developed by. Uh, BioNTech, but of course, Tron was involved on, the, on these studies uh, on the early uh, time for the mRNA vaccine and other um, um, path collaborators and involved uh, and the partners involved in this uh, approach. And with that, I complete, I thank all the people involved uh, in BioNTech, mainly the driver of the studies and uh, Sebastian and Mustafa, um, who are uh, the wine tron who deal uh, constantly and bring to us uh, interesting questions and challenge from Biontech to tron. <laughs>